So when you are really connected to your inner being, then suddenly you can start to sense and feel and perceive other people's inner being. And now when relationships are attracted to you, you are not as susceptible to being fooled by the story of the relationship. Even if it's like this magnificent story of, oh, I can't believe that this is how we met. And this same song played over and over again. And this like synchronistic event happened. It must be meant to be. And I feel so good with you. This must be the twin flame connection I've been looking for. Whether or not that is the case for you is not my point. That is up to you to decide ultimately. But what I am saying is that true connection diminishes as soon as story kicks in. As soon as we start to filter our relationship through a story of a personal self relating to another personal self, having a relationship experience that is then put on a pedestal and idolized as the most important thing in your life. This is a sure way to A, lose more connection with your true self, unless in rare occasions that's actually perfectly acceptable and that is exactly the theme of these two beings to be together for life and to really share that intense relationship experience where they extract most of their learning from the relationship as their object of focus itself. But in most scenarios, don't fool yourself, in most scenarios, check in with yourself. In most lives, I can confidently say that for most people, relationships are reflections of where they're at at the journey and they're not necessarily meant to be with one person this whole time. I'm sorry to break the news. Um, you don't have to believe me if it's not true for you. Like I said, there are exceptions. <laughs> but in most cases, <laughs> um, the relationships have to be seen as reflections of where you're at. Now, this might be that this relationship lasts a really long time. It might even be that it lasts for life. However, again, that's not the point. The duration of the relationship is not the point. The point is that we tend to give away our power and our connection to our own journey, we tend to forget our own journey for the sake of another person connection and feeling fulfilled in that. And we all know that we cannot always feel fulfilled from the physical level. You know, initially it's amazing when the other person touches you and acknowledges you and shares their life with you and all that. And that is beautiful. And it's also beautiful later on in the later stages. But you can't keep relating to another person from this over eager, excited point of view that's really excited because his lack beliefs are now being fulfilled in form. Because as soon as those lack beliefs get into the game and story takes over, you lose that true energetic spiritual connection to who you truly are, to your higher self. And when this happens, oftentimes either the relationship turns for the worse or um, in the rare scenario where you're actually meant to go through all these phases together with one person and that is in your theme of this life. That's a rare scenario, but it happens as well. It, that's totally cool as well. Or the relationship starts to disappear. The reflection starts to disappear because you lose connection with who you are. And the reason that this hyper-reflective, soul-connected relationship could even come and enter your reality to begin with is because you raised your frequency and your connection to your true self. But now that this reflection is here, and people do this also with other things, like when they finally get the car they want, or the house they want, or the money they want, or even like the enlightenment, the spiritual experience that they want. Oh, there it was. I meditated for so long. I raised my frequency. And there was my enlightenment experience. Now, as soon as they latch on to that, the experience starts to disappear. So you see, in life, we're always trained to never lose connection and predominantly make important the alignment within who we truly are, our true path, our true journey, our true path here on earth. So first and foremost, before we talk about anything else, before I answer any other questions, I want you to take a deep breath right now. Relax all your thinking mind. Hmm. Do it again. Take a deep breath and relax. Hmm. One more time. Take a deep, relaxing breath and let go of even more thoughts and become empty and transparent and at ease, naturally at ease. Allow yourself to notice that there's this effortless awareness present hearing my voice without you even trying. Effortless awareness present right here. You're not even trying, but you're aware of my voice. You're not even trying, but you're aware of my voice. You're not even trying, but you're effortlessly present and aware of my voice. Inescapable 
awareness. This is your true being. This is always what leads you back into connection with your true resonance, your true self. To notice that you're the consciousness aware of all of this. That you're the inner being that goes through this journey in life. And it is through your connection and making most important your connection to your own inner source, to your own inner alignment and resonance, that you then gain the skills to more aptly communicate and relate to other beings that show up in your life as reflections of where you are at vibrationally. You will not be able to track the relationship that you believe is out of your league, that is above your pay grade, that is above your level of worthiness or deservability. So work on the relationship with yourself. Start to see that you are part of an infinite reality, that you are an infinite being, that you are an eternal consciousness. And become clearer on what you are here to become. What is most important in your life. And let it not be a relationship. I'm sorry to break this to you again. But let it not be a relationship. And I'm saying this to you so that you can actually have the relationship experiences you desire to attract to yourself. But it is my promise that for 99.99% .99 of the people, you're not going to be able to attract a relationship that is satisfying to you if you haven't first developed a truly profound, satisfying connection to your higher self and your path in life. If you have not prioritized that first, if that's not the most important thing in your sphere of consciousness yet, then even if you're able to glimpse and attract momentary relationships of that nature, you will not be able to maintain those relationships. You will not be able to maintain that type of relationship, even if it comes from multiple people or different people or just one person whatever happens for you the point is you can't have what you want unless you truly connect to who you are and you make that the most important thing in your life now here's the good news for your the romantic people out there once you are really established and connected with yourself and you are able to set this this tone, this vibrational tone, or this vibrational standard, or this no-nonsense policy field within your aura, within your being, that basically says vibrationally, I unconditionally love you, and I unconditionally love myself. However, my journey, my path, my connection to myself is my most important relationship, and I cannot sacrifice that for you or anybody else. I can make all kinds of other sacrifices and concessions, but not this one. I can be as accommodating and caring and loving and give to you as much and all that I am. But I cannot and will not and do not want to sacrifice the connection to my true self and my true path and journey in this life. Now when you set that vibrational standard, suddenly you start to become, with each relationship you attract, you start to gain this experiential practice of, I do not have to be afraid to lose anybody. Because I am able to attract new relationship all the time. Even when it seems like it can't get any better, it always does. And so you start to learn that you do not have to fear losing that particular relationship. And you can start to actually then appreciate because now you're not clinging to it from a human perspective. You're not projecting all your lack beliefs and hopes into it. You're actually a free, confident being. And if this person can match that within themselves, you can have a beautiful relationship for however long that organically lasts and that you guys can grow and share together. And that's amazing. When both beings come from alignment to themselves first and foremost, now there is a true vibrational understanding. And now all these chakras and energy centers can start to transfer energy to each other on a more consistent basis. And then you can feel the amazing connection. And again, be careful not to wrap it in, into a story. It's not a story. It's, it's a reflection of where you're at. It's not a story. Don't lift from story. Lift from presence. Lift from consciousness. Lift from an awakened, realized connection to yourself. And notice what is truly in resonance for you and what is not. And notice your negative beliefs and definitions and clear them up. Take responsibility for your lack of beliefs and for your hopes and for your fears. And clear them out of your field to such an extent that you become this vibrationally free consciousness that's then able to naturally attract a relationship that's able to reflect that, at least to some degree. And now you can grow together for a period of time or for the rest of your life 
who knows? But don't put any stories on it. Just let it come and go as it pleases, knowing that the true source of your happiness lies within your unwavering alignment to yourself.